So I'm Sean Jenkinson, and my role in Amazon is the group executive of nuclear business. We make many wonderful products, uh, most importantly our nuclear medicines. Uh, the nuclear medicines that are distributed all around Australia and are critical in life-saving diagnosis to help patients across Australia and globally. In addition to that, we have other products in minerals and mining, silicon irradiations, and radiation safety. So that's really the scope of my role. Safety, health, sustainability, security, I guess they're things we all hear about. Sometimes I often think about how important they're all integrated together. I mean, working at a facility that has a nuclear reactor, I'm sure everyone understands the need for security. At ANSTO, we're as vulnerable to slips, trips and falls as anything else, albeit we have to make sure we deal with radiation protection and radiation that we're managing every day. We've got some fantastic approaches to how we manage that to make sure we keep our staff safe. We do some wonderful things with science, but importantly we make products that are used by the Australian medical community. And we must be able to make those in a sustainable way. And what's important for me with health and safety and quality and compliance is they all go hand in hand. If you're an organisation that thinks about health and safety, you think about compliance and you understand quality, those things actually help your business. They help you become more sustainable. The whole concept of moving towards zero, zero injuries, zero defects, zero errors, that's a quality movement that makes my business sustainable. And that's really important for us when we think about everything we do, and of course health and safety as well. I ask myself often, how do I know that it's working at Amsterdam? Because people tell you, and you can see the way people work and interact with each other. And it's just a small story, I guess, to illustrate it. When I first started here, we seemed to work sometimes in a little bit of crisis, but the team were committed to getting product to the customer, so their intention and their motivation was excellent. But as we introduced that concept of quality and high reliability of mindfulness and thinking, we got into planning and planning, plan B, plan C. And I think the way I measured that was on a Sunday morning, which is our biggest production day, I used to get maybe six to eight text messages before 10 o'clock with all the challenges and problems. Now we get it because it works, there's a plan, people work together, it's integrated, and I know they're operating in a very high reliable way and thinking about health and safety. ASTO, as you know, is on the cutting edge uh, of innovation and science, but we've also got to think about how we maintain and stay on the, the cutting edge around safety at the same time, because new scientific discoveries, they lead us into things we're not sure we should be thinking about sometimes. So what's important is that as we develop our innovation and our technology, we have to be thinking all the time how we stay ahead and future-proof ourselves and the way we operate. But we're very lucky at Ansto in that from our CEO down through the organisation, we've got a lot of people who are constantly thinking about how we improve. Because the compliance requirement continues to go up, but we want to continue to be ahead of that. So for us at Ansto, what that means is making sure that as we think about the next cutting edge innovation, we stay ahead of it in our thinking. And what that means, in practical terms, is that we have our plan. We do a lot of thinking around risk assessment and understanding what are the hazards that actually happen? And then putting in those strategies to deal with it. And obviously, the most important one is elimination. We want to eliminate hazards wherever we can and take account of all those potential concerns people may have when they're dealing with something that's new. A good example of what we did with nanoparticles. We've all heard of those. And so when you start working with nanoparticles, you have to understand the implications in, in health and the environment. And that's where we do our when we talk about things like nanoparticles and new technologies coming along, we have to, of course, take that precautionary approach. We talk about that more typically as conservative decision making, making sure that we have a process, how we think about whatever it is we do, whether it is nanoparticles or whether it's just implementing a new machine within a manufacturing facility. We have to take time to think about all of the steps of the risk that could happen. Think as far into the future as we can. And then you know what? We have to come back and check it again. Because a conservative approach at this stage would save an awful lot in the future. Managing radioactive materials can be challenging. And obviously, it's imperative that we manage the safety of our, our workforce, of any visitors that come on site. We have, I suppose, a deeply embedded culture of safety that starts at the top of the city and resonates through the city management team and is reinforced daily and hourly. And meetings and interactions. In the manufacturing side, we start every day with the toolbox talks to 
making sure that we've got those most up-to-date pieces of information we're communicating with the field. Every meeting across the organisation, we start with a safety discussion. Now that safety discussion, of course, take into account safety activities, but more importantly, we'll talk about what is our safety focus for the current two months. And that switches every two months to keep it fresh, keep it current, and make sure that we can have some real life stories from people in the organisation to help us learn and improve. And at the moment, the focus is really around positive things we can take out of their investigations so that we do improve. So it's, it's a really good focus on the good things, understanding what happens, not blaming, but understanding why things have happened so we can put them right in the future. At ASTO, we've got many wonderful scientists, engineers, technical people. But I have a, a fundamental belief that I've always worked with is you can't help but form your leadership. So if your leadership is a constraint on what you do, that's a challenge. So as leaders, we have to understand those really important skills of situational leadership, engagement with people, understanding, committing to actions of courses of actions around topics such as health and safety. So that we seem to be not just talking about it, but embracing it and living it. So I often talk to the team about the inability to outperform leadership, make sure our leadership is improving all the time so that we can raise performance across everything. When it comes down to talking about the individual teams and the team level, what we do is we probably attempt to over communicate, you never can of course, but is you take multiple opportunities in meetings, one-to-ones and staff forums on the internet to reinforce messages. The most important message though is the time you spend with someone, one-to-one to coach them, support them and help them develop across all of their areas of development, but doubly important for health and safety. We've got highly technical and scientific staff on site and what is critically important is that we help and support everyone to be better communicators around everything we do. So for us it's providing leadership to demonstrate communication in team meetings. It's also importantly about encouraging people and putting in processes that drive, I suppose, a routine, regular communication. We have a monthly cycle of meetings and events whereby this rolls along every month and people get information that is then cascaded out to the organisation. So that more systematic and embedded approach is a really good way of getting the communication. It takes discipline, so that discipline to keep it going and have the meetings, ensure the communication happens, that's absolutely critical for a successful organisation. And ASO wants to be the leading edge of safety. So I don't know, I'm fortunate that I get to travel and visit other facilities overseas that have similar uh, landmark facilities that we do. So we get to see how they operate, benchmark and compare ourselves. And many of my colleagues also get the opportunity to travel, look at other facilities, bring back opportunities and best practice. We also have many visitors that come to us and one of the things we always ask them to do is when they come into Asto is view us with fresh eyes. What do they see as they go around that we might be missing because we're so close to it and we see it every day? And their insight can often be fantastic in helping us Obviously have as much reporting as possible. We'll take out of that reporting as early as possible those key trends for something we can improve on. We're making that a routine part of our practice so we identify something, then we put a real focus on that for a short period of time, look for improvement, measure it, see if it's actually becoming embedded in the way we operate, then go back and start again, see if we can improve it again. The take home message, we all need to support the colleagues take care of your colleagues in the way they interact. I urge people to be courageous, fight the bullet, have the discussion in a really positive way. We back that up by using the philosophy of asking all of our staff to assume good intent when they've been giving feedback. So if someone's giving you some feedback, assume they're doing good intent, then you'll take that well, the interaction will be more positive and will finally improve people. Last words of advice, first of all, you're fortunate like I am to work in an environment and a work area that you love, that's fantastic. But don't take for granted that people have invested time and effort to make the environment not just a good place to work, but a safe place to work. So all of those people on a daily basis take time to take care of your safety in an organisation. Take time to go and thank them because they're thinking of you and you need to make sure you think of them as well every day to make the environment a safe place to work.